So I don't know if you've noticed, but instead of building electric motorcycles to compete directly with internal combustion bikes, BMW seem to be just focusing on these super futuristic scooter type things. In fact, we've had four unveiled over the past couple of months, both prototypes and ready for sale. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the key stuff you need to know about each of them, and then I'll tell you why at the moment I think they've got it right by focusing on these urban mobility machines. But before we get started, a quick thanks to NordV VPN for sponsoring this video. A little more on them later though. So let's start with the one that's actually going on the market now before we get onto the slightly more wacky concepts. This one's called the CE04 and you can already register your interest on the BMW Motorrad website with bikes arriving in dealers from early 2022. Now with all of these bikes, BMW seem to be focusing on tech, convenience, comfort and style above trying to compete with internal combustion bikes in terms of raw power and huge range. A rated output of 20 horsepower with a peak of 42 isn't going to set the world alight, especially at 231 kilograms in running order. It clearly isn't meant to be a weekend blast kind of bike. They've taken advantage of the electric motor with dollops of low end torque. The 62 newton meters available basically anywhere between 0 and 5,000 RPM. So it can still blast off the line up to 30 miles per hour in 2.6 seconds. Clearly, it's built with a specific urban purpose in mind. And it's kind of the same story with the range. It's not a massive amount, just 80 miles so way less than you'd expect from most petrol bikes and less than quite a few of the other electrics. But realistically, for commuting in town, it's probably enough for a few days. It's kind of like modest but appropriate in those terms, but where it does really excel is with the tech. BMW, they're right up there with the best of the best in terms of rider aids, safety features, and creature comforts. So the CEO 4 gets traction control and ABS as standard, of course, and you can make them both lean sensitive as an accessory option. There are three riding modes with eco to preserve battery, rain for slippery conditions, and road for regular riding. There's even an option for a dynamic mode, enabling swifter acceleration for when you're running late for a board meeting. All of these features can be managed through the best motorcycle dash that I've ever tried, their massive 10 and a quarter inch TFT. It's so big that you can split the screen to have speed and whatnot on one side, and then the other half dedicated to phone integration for navigation prompts or media playback. Speaking of your phone, it can be stashed in the charging compartment where you can connect it with a USB-C port. It's also actively ventilated, which is BMW's fancy way of saying there's a fan to stop your phone getting too hot. There's LED lighting all round, with a headlight pro option that makes it lean sensitive to illuminate the inside of a turn as you corner in. And on top of that, there's a welcome and goodbye feature again as an option. Now I speak from a few years of experience when I say that carrying your lid into the office is a bit of an inconvenience. So it's good to see a couple of storage compartments here, one of which can take a full size helmet. On top of that, I reckon it looks incredible. It still looks like a concept bike and I mean that in a massively good way. I really do like that big long flat bench seat and how clean they've managed to keep the rear end. There's a single sided swing arm with a disc wheel, the little orange tinted fly screen. It just looks like something from a sci-fi film, something futuristic and I absolutely love it. Now unfortunately the price is a little steep, £11,700 but surely this is the pinnacle of urban commuting comfort and practicality. It gets loads of the best features from their proper big bikes like the GS and RT, but just in a super convenient, nippy little package. But it's not just the CE04, there are a couple of other interesting concepts that they've recently announced that suggest that BMW are really leaning into this aspect of electric motorcycling. But before we get onto those, a massive thanks to NordVPN for their support on this video. Now, it might be the first time that some of you have used a VPN, so let me put it in terms we all understand, motorcycles. NordVPN is just like a motorcycle sound nav because it can take you to new countries and regions. Some streaming services offer different catalogues of content per country or are completely blocked altogether. And the same even goes for some websites. With NordVPN you can access it all by connecting to a server in that country. Now NordVPN is also kind of like a passenger seat cow because sometimes you don't want somebody looking over your shoulder. VPN traffic is more heavily encrypted than normal, so even if someone did manage to get hold of your packets, they wouldn't be able to read them. And it also reduces the amount of data that's collected about you by anonymizing your traffic. If you really think about it, NordVPN is also like a radiator guard because it lets the good stuff through, air, and then, <laughs> and then filters the bad stuff out. An air filter might have actually been a better 
analogy there. Nord prevents websites that you're looking at from loading other stuff behind the scenes that would be damaging to your computer, aka malware. Look, I always comprehensively test out the products that sponsor the channel, and I've been using Nord for long enough to vouch for how good it is. Not only does it offer all of the benefits above, but it's super reliable and stable, and easily fast enough to stream video without any interruption. There's a link in the description, or just go to nordvpn.com slash motobob, where you can get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount. Now with the CE04, sure it's got loads of great features, but that price is realistically way out of reach for a younger audience. And so BMW created this concept to show what it might look like if geared towards an audience that they say is 16 and over, who've not ridden a motorbike before, but are open to new experiences, smart technology, and above all, combining mobility with fun. It's basically half the weight at 120 kilograms and has a learner legal power output of 11 kilograms kilowatts, which is about 14 and a half horses. Range is about 55 miles, top speed 55 miles per hour, and so it's a much more stripped back and simple riding experience. Now it still looks like a lot of fun to me and I really like the styling, although I've got to say I'm not sure about that skateboard come footrest situation. It could though save you a few scratches if you knock your bike over, <laughs> it would probably just roll away on its side. They've also launched a couple of e-bikes, although in terms of capability, they're verging on entry-level motorcycles. The iVision Ambi can do up to 37 miles per hour in the right setting, although according to the press release, you'll need insurance and plates at those higher speeds. They also talk about using your phone as a key for the bike, and it will use the existing facial recognition on your phone to make sure it's you. If you want to share the bike with someone, one, it also electronically adjusts the seat height and it makes the seat post go up and down based upon whose phone unlocks the bike. Mad. Now this Vision Ambi without the eye is more of a mountain bike than motocross bike, a bit like the Sauron that I reviewed a while back. Definitely a lot of fun and I can easily see myself razzing around town on this as well. But yeah, you might be thinking what happened to that electric motorcycle concept that they made a few years back and why don't they make a Zero or Livewire competitor that basically takes the chassis of a motorcycle and swaps in a battery and electric motor? See, I don't know, I think they're on the right track here. I've been lucky enough to try plenty of electric motorcycles over the past few years, and although they're absolutely loads of fun to ride with all that torque and the ease of the twist and go throttle, you still do run up against the same issues. Range, of course, is worse than a petrol bike, especially for the sort of riding a lot of us like to do. On the motorway at a constant speed or hammering out of corners on country lanes, you're going to sap the battery pretty quickly. And then you have to look for somewhere to charge it up, which even now in 2021 can still be a royal pain. And then when you do find somewhere to charge, it's going to be like an hour at least before you can get back on the road. All of these problems fade away in the city. Stop start traffic is ideal because you're traveling at lower speeds and then the battery regenerates as you're slowing down. So the range is always going to be far better in town than out of it. And then take a look at an app like ZapMap. If you do need to charge up, there are loads more places to do it in the city. And on top of that, if you do have to wait for an hour, there's like cafes and things to do as opposed to sitting on the curb in a supermarket car park which I have done in the past, and it was boring. You know, and that's even if you do need to charge when you're out and about. I borrowed a new NGT, so a lot less premium, less range than the CE04, and it was easily enough to get me to work and back in London, from one side of the city to the other, and then when I got home, I just plugged it in in the garage, charges overnight, by the morning, it was full again. Super convenient and cheap. Generally, when you're commuting, you know the sort of mileage that you're going to do each day. So it's really easy to predict when you'll need to charge and you can plan around it. It's just not the same if you're out for a Sunday ride and you want to get lost a bit. And look, I know that infrastructure will get better. And then we've got this news of a consortium for a standardized swappable battery format between Honda and Yamaha and Piaggio and KTM. But all that stuff's in the future. At the moment, a bike like the CE04, which is difficult to say, it's the only logical thing to make electric motorcycles are still a difficult sell because there's a lot of compromise, but this, well, the electricness is part of its appeal. But as always, I'd love to know what you think of it down in the comments below. Should they bother with something like an electric sports bike or is it still too early? Let me know what you think. And if you're new here and you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> uh.